All right, new year, new devlog. So let's get into this. Um, as you can see, we've got some new components, new 3D models, um, which represent a big refactoring of how ships and components and all that sort of stuff works. And uh, second of all, got new star systems and some work done on how star systems work in general multiple star systems that is that's not that's another star system uh, anyway i'll start with components so the big refactor involves kind of making things a bit more tightly coupled together before i had it where this was a weapons hard point and back there was a power supply hard point and an engine hard point and they all only supported the weapons component and the power supply component and the engine component etc etc um, and I kind of want to keep them all separate because I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to couple them together when they should actually be different. But the more I worked on it, the more I'm like, you know what, these things can all be kind of grouped together, and it has worked has worked out. Um, as part of that work means that now not only can the ship have hard points that then have things that can be installed in them, but now components can also have hard points with things that can be installed in them. Like this little resonator chamber, and uh, you also have a little energizer coil. Um, come on. Yeah. One of the problems is there we go. <laughs> so right now there are stats. You can't see them because I haven't exposed them really anywhere except well, actually there is a few places. Let's let's go have a look. We'll come back to this. Let's have a look at the power system because there's some numbers there. Bring an energizer coil with me. So right now, this new power supply has a fuel cell that sits in the middle that provides 20 power. Ooh, hey, energizer. Um, but there are these little two side bits off to the side that can take energizer coils. We can now see the max power is 24. And if we boop that out, it goes back down to 20. So I've got it that these energizer coils effectively either increase the power output of a power supply or decrease the power needed by a component. Um, again, I need some numbers. But I wasn't worried about that just now. Um, if we come back here, if we install this, and if we install this, which doesn't have anything, in, no components in there. Um, and then if we deploy them, <laughs> Pew pew. Uh, hopefully you can see the ones on the left look a bit smaller to the ones on the right. The right the right ones are bigger and brighter and all of that. And that's to reflect the fact that it actually has more damage. This you know the resonator chamber times two um, actually increased the uh, damage output of this and you kind of reflected in the uh, visible the visible parts, I guess you could say. Resonator chamber times two. Um, so another part of it is that I wanted uh, max power, 28.8. Hmm. Uh, something funky will happen there. Um, we'll look at that later. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the things, that resonator chamber, that shouldn't be, that is affecting the power output of the system that's in the gun, uh, when it's supposed to actually reduce the power needed. Hmm. Anyway, something to look at later. So, um, I kind of created a bunch of different things. I've got an energy manifold, a plasma coil, a heat exchanger, and I've got a phase discriminator, and all the, I've kind of made a bunch of different like sci-fi components that I wanted to uh, be able to install into different things. I kind of wanted it to not be too many components. And generally speaking, I wanted it to be like, you know, for this here, you know, you need a fuel cell, otherwise, this power supply does nothing, but the energizer components are optional. Yeah, I'll close that again. Um, but maybe with the gun, you always need a, a resonate, uh, you know, you always need a resonator chamber, even if the stats are times one, you know, don't actually affect the base stats of the gun itself. Um, don't know what a phase discriminator will do, but I'll figure out something. Um, yeah, 
And then, so the next part is, which is also not shown in the UI anywhere, is damage. So these components can be damaged, which will then decrease their effectiveness um, to the point where it's like, well, now it's destroyed effectively, which means you either need to repair it, craft a new one, or salvage one. So I want to have a, you know, you might find a shipwreck in space and you're like, great, one of my guns isn't working, that's okay. You know, I'll go into the ship, fly around it, see, aha, they have a gun and open up a thing and then pull out the resonator chamber and watch it fly off because, oh, there it is. <laughs> you figure out some of the physics a bit better. There we go. Um, you know, and then you'd be like, great, I'll just take that with me. And then you take it back to your ship. I also need to have it that you can grab onto things better. But, you know, that's uh, also next. Um, yeah, so I kind of wanted to en encourage that sort of gameplay of just like finding things and making use of them, which is also why I don't want too many different kinds of subcomponents because otherwise, you know, if everything is super specialized, you'll almost never run into like the same thing that you already have. Aha, see the power usage, the max power outed, output went down when I disconnected this. If I reconnect it, hey, power goes up again. Figured it out. I'll fix it later. Um, yeah, anyway, let's turn on the engines and go into the next part, which is um, deep space, effectively. Um, we don't have a target right now, the star system one. Star system two is a little bit obscured by star system one, and there is a blue dot over there, which is a black hole. Let's have a look at star system one, which just looks like the same one as the last time, really. But you can see it would take a while to get there. We didn't have a warp engine. Hey, so let's, let's up. I need, we've got a nice sound for turning it on, but no hum for while it is on. Anyway, I'll work on that later. I want to have it that maybe around here-ish is when you would be forced to turn it off and you would have to enter the star system at sublight speed or maybe some sort of like just slower boosted speed or minimum warp or something. So I don't want to be dealing with too many physics issues of you going at actually FTL speeds and then colliding with a star or something like that. So I'll just have it that like in, you can only warp in deep space. Um, but yeah, let's get a little bit closer. Just sort of bump it up and then new. Quite like the coming in and out. Um, but yeah, now that we're in Star System 1, we should be able to. I still can't target Star System 2. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, also kind of ignore these units. Uh, you might have to zoom in and see, but they say they're in meters. So it says we're only 35 kilometers from the star. Uh, I'm thinking I need to. That's like represents the kind of internal units, but I think I need to say that they're like kilometers instead of meters or something like that. The the game is not supposed to be the scale anyway, um, but uh, yeah, I need to have might need to have the units be a little more believable than thirty five k. But yeah, so let's uh, let's aim for something further away, like this black hole. Um, you don't need to target it. Um, that's kind of just to help you let you know how far you have to go. All right, let's uh, crank up the warp factor. Uh, the two bars, probably don't really need two of them, but the one on the left indicates where you want to be going and the one on the right is like your actual speed. Um, so yeah, we can just leave this here. Um, there's definitely an issue where if you don't have anything to do, kind of has the, does, yeah the design floor of it being like, great, it's space, there's nothing out here. I could probably have, you know, I, I do intend to put more things in there, but you know, what if you don't encounter them? Now you're just going through literal empty space with nothing to do. Um, which is where I do want to have more things to do in your ship. You know, that's kind of where some crafting and repair work comes in. You know, you might be like, great, we're going at warp, we're doing things, you know, let's uh, have a look at the sublight engines. Yeah, I don't have a component for the FTL that's visible anyway. You know, have it where it's like, all right, let's work on, you know, let's work on the weapons. You know, this thing here needs some work, you know. Some of these components have been damaged or there's none in there, you know, like, great, install one. You know, do all of this sort of stuff, you know, have some maintenance work in there. Ideally, and this is getting even more far-fetched, <laughs> have some crewmen, you know, have it where it's like, there's other interactions you can do. You know, you can say, I wanna go to this, 
it'll drop out of warp once you get to the edge of the system and then you can be like aha we're here and then you come back to the cockpit and you know do something um but that does rely on there being enough things to do inside of your ship oh we're getting close oh god there we go it's a big old black hole that's also very blue hey. maybe a little bit low compared to it but uh let's get a little bit closer to side on now i can't take credit for this fancy warping effect that also still comes from the uh, space graphics toolkit um it's uh yeah i'm going to say that the blue glow isn't just so that i know where it is in space because otherwise it would actually be invisible um, even with this accretion disk um there we go a little bit more side on a fancy do i have an it's pretty neat um and again the numbers yeah i don't think we're just hanging out 4k from the edge of a singularity especially not a spinning one uh, anyway yeah we can just hang out here hang out by this black hole that's emitting nice blue light which i'm sure is healthy radiation um yeah but this kind of also still represents like i kind of don't want there to be obvious loading screens i want it to be like great you want to go there you, you point your ship in that direction and you go, you know, or you find a ship that's going in that direction. You hitch a ride or something, you know. Um, yeah, this is also literally just a visual effect. You can fly right through it and nothing would happen because there's nothing to happen. Um, but it's still a little bit disconcerting, which I'll, I'll take as, as good as someone who knows, <laughs> who put it in there and knows that it does nothing. Um, it is still disconcerting, so I'm going to back away from it. Um, but yeah, we can turn around and find other things to point at. So some of these things are going to be obvious, and I do want to have it that some of the, it's like, yep, great, I know that star, it's over there, and that star is over there. But then some of these things I want to have it that, like, you can't see until you're closer to it. Probably like, you know, the black hole, you know. You're not going to know that you're near one unless you either know it exists already or you're close to it. Um, let's go back to warp. See a black hole? Uh, we'll leave that there. We went back here. Can we be able to see it or at a bad angle? I think we're at a bad angle. Anyway, you don't want to fall out while it's going at warp. Um, it will, your ship will basically, you'll be fine, except your ship will basically immediately disappear into the void and yeah. So that is another thing to worry about. Fail states. What happens if you lose your ship? What happens if something breaks? You know, coming back to components being damaged. What happens if you, you know, your engines or your power supply are damaged? Um, I've got ideas. You know, I've got ideas for if you are actually stuck uh, and what's going to happen. Um, but I need to flesh them out more, which I think can come later uh, once I have more of a game. Um, but yes. Uh, some of this refactoring, I've kind of left out some other things, you know, I don't have a space station to land on again, but that shouldn't take too long. That's more of a content issue. Um, I kind of want to get uh, some crafting involved. I kind of want to see what it's like, get some more different sized ships. Um, I kind of want to bring some more life to the system, this world as well, you know. Well, universe? Anyway. Oop. Loaded in. Um, I've also got slow down a little bit um could probably change some of the units i've got but i've got it where the light from the star doesn't immediately turn on because i had it where as soon as you got close enough the light turned on which was very sudden um could probably bring the light a bit further out but i wanted to have it that the light sort of dims on yeah here there you go you can see now we're at full brightness it kind of makes it a bit more you eased your way into the star system um, and then, you know, like get around this close and then you're forced out of warp and you have to make your way in some other way. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm enjoying it so far. There's a lot to do. I've probably given myself a way too ambitious project, but you know, that makes it fun. So, uh, yeah, Let me cruise control. Oop. Jump out of the seat, watch things go past the sublight. Um, there's definitely still more work to be done on literally everything. 
Um, am I still moving? <laughs> Ooh, yep, that thing is poking out. Change the model size. I know why we're not moving. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, that was a recent change I made. I got annoyed with the fact that, like, as I was uh, moving around, that I would I would be moving and I press escape and I would keep moving. So I've got it now that all the control cockpit controls reset as soon as you stop, jump out of the seat. But then obviously, what's the point of cruise control? Apart from whilst you're sitting in the seat, I guess you don't have to be pushing a button. Anyway, things to lots of polish to work out. I've got some more 3D models that I haven't finished yet for some new ships. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out an exact, what's the word, an exact uh, aesthetic to go for, but um, yeah. Anyway, lots to do. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have something new in the next one. Hopefully a nicer dashboard as well. This is very kind of hacked together. Um, which probably makes sense for a good junky kind of broken down ship, but uh, anyway. See you in the next one.